It's another great day at IS Kids Online. Teacher Izzy is here, and I just have to tell you, I'm feeling so grateful, so thankful, and so content. Who remembers what contentment is? Contentment is learning to be okay with what you have. A lot of the times we can look around and want what other people have. It always seems like there's something bigger and better, you know? But we can be content when we decide to roll with what we've got. When we put our focus on all the good things God is doing in our lives. We will listen more about it in our Bible story. Now I want to remind you to take a good picture of you while watching our IS Kids online video. Then send it to the WhatsApp number here below. Okay, let's stand up kids. It's time to worship the Lord. Hello everyone, we've got another great story from the Bible today that shows us why contentment is so important. We're going all the way back to the book of Exodus to see what happened with God's people, the Israelites, after they left Egypt. As you might remember, the Israelites had been forced to work as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God to help them, and God sent a man named Moses to lead them to freedom. God even parted the waters of the Red Sea so the Israelites could safely walk across to the other side. Sea. 
It was clear that God was with them. Not only that, they were headed to the land that God had promised would be just for them. They must have been so happy and grateful to be free, right? Well, after a while of traveling through the desert, the Israelites started to whining and complaining. You must want all of us to die of hunger out here. Yeah, we had it good in Egypt. All the food we wanted. You do remember you were slaves, right? But we had so much meat we could barbecue every day. Hold on. If I were Moses, I would have been thinking, Really, you guys? You wish you could go back to Egypt? Where you were slaves? Weird. The people had seen God do so many amazing things, like parting the Red Sea to rescue them. They knew that God had a good plan for their future. But in that moment, they could only think about one thing. They were hungry. God heard the people complaining and had a plan to provide food for them. God told Moses, People don't trust you to give them food. I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Did you hear that? Bread from heaven. Moses and Aaron went to the people and told them what God had said. Come to the Lord. He has heard you speak against him. While Aaron spoke, the people looked toward the desert and they could see the glory of the Lord there in a cloud. And then God said to Moses, Tell the people, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. After that, Moses and Aaron delivered the message to the Israelites. In the evening, you will know that the Lord brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord. He will give you meat to eat in the evening. He'll give you all the bread you want in the morning. Ha! Seeing is believing. Then you should probably look over there. Whoa. Listen to what happened next. That evening, lots and lots of birds called quail came and landed in the camp. Quail barbecue for dinner! The Israelites had their meat when the sun went down just like God had said. And that wasn't all. In the morning, the floor of the desert all around the camp of the Israelites was covered in dew. As the dew dried, thin flakes like frost appeared. Moses told the people that it was the bread God had given them to eat. The bread tasted sweet like honey. The people called it manna. Moses told the people to gather only as much as they needed for the day. What's this? Looks like snow. Like what? The stuff that falls on mountaintops. Flaky, white, tastes like honey. This is manna. It's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Gather only as much as you need for the day. What about tomorrow? Don't keep any of it until morning. God will give us what we need then. But some of them weren't content with that. Some of them disobeyed God and tried to keep leftovers until the next day. When they did, something bad happened to it. Do you want to hear? Any of the manna that the people kept overnight was, was filled with maggots. <laughs> you know, like baby flies. Oh, gross. Ew. <sighs> the people learned that it was important to follow God's instructions. And as long as they stayed in the desert, God continued to give them fresh manna to eat in the morning. God allowed them to gather a double portion in the morning of the sixth day so they could rest on the seventh day. God gave the people enough food for every day and then they moved their camps. Time to move camp! You would think that now the Israelites would be totally happy and grateful, right? Well, they were no longer hungry since God had provided food for them in the desert. But were they content? They argued with Moses and demanded that he give them water. They said, Seriously, I am so parched. Give us water to drink right now. Why are you arguing with me? Don't you trust the Lord? Why did you lead us out of Egypt? At least we had water there. Now we're all going to die of thirst. I know it's hard to believe, but again, the people were saying that they wish they were back in Egypt. How foolish they were. 
They had seen God do so many amazing things, even give them enough food for every day. God was leading them to a better future. But still, they wanted to go back to the life they had known before. They were not grateful at all. The people got so mad at Moses that they were about to throw stones at him. Moses cried out to God and God answered. Well, what am I going to do with these people? They're ready to kill me. Go out in front of the people. Take the walking stick you used when you struck the Nile River. I will stand there in front of you by the rock at Mount Horeb. Hit the rock, then water will come out of it. Thank you, Lord. Then Moses called out the leaders and the people of Israel together. Come up with me to the rock at Mount Horeb. Now see what God will do. Moses struck the rock. Immediately, God caused cold, clear water to gush from the rock, forming a rushing stream below. You see, sure enough, God had provided water for his people. <gasps> Not bad. Yeah, I guess it beats Egypt for now. Over and over again, God had given the Israelites everything they needed for their journey. God had left them out of slavery and into freedom. God had provided food in the desert and water from a rock. But the Israelites kept complaining because they kept thinking about the way things were before. They were missing out on the amazing things that God was doing right in front of their eyes. Kids, it's easy for us to look back and think, come on Israelites, are you kidding me? It seems so obvious that they should have trusted God along the way, right? But remember, we can say that because we know the end of the story. And the same thing that happened with them can happen with us. We can miss out on what God is doing in our lives if we forget to look for it. So remember our bottom line for this week. Don't miss out on what you have now. If we are in a situation that we're not sure about, We can easily focus on the past or worry about what might happen in the future. But a big part of contentment is learning to be grateful for the good things in your life right now. It's learning to trust God no matter what. Let's pray and ask God to help us to trust Him. God, thank you for this important reminder that you are always working in our lives. You were leading the Israelites and giving them everything they needed along the way. But they complained. They forgot to be content and thankful. Please help us put our focus on you. Help us not to miss out on the good things you're doing in our lives right now. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. See you again next week, kids. It's pop quiz time. This week, we're going to play a game of multiple choice. I'll ask you a question and you can shout out loud whether it's A, B, or C based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Okay, number one, what did God send from heaven for the Israelites to eat? Was it A, Starbucks coffee and kappa, B, quails and manna, or C, mi goreng and boba? Did you guess B? Because that's the correct answer. God sent quails and manna from heaven so the Israelites could eat. Number two. What came out of the rock after Moses hit it? Was it A, caramel frappuccino, B, bua fita juice, or C, water? I think you know this one. When Moses hit the rock, water came out of it. Well done. All right, here's the last one. What did the Israelites want whenever they complained to Moses? Was it A, they wished they were back in Egypt, B, they wished the Wi-Fi connection was faster, or C, they wished they didn't have to wake up so early in the morning? That is correct. The Israelites often complained to Moses that they wished they were back in Egypt. Amazing job, friends. Thanks for playing Pop Quiz with me. Kids, 
It's me, Teacher Hasty. It's so great to be here again with you. Let's read the memory verse together. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Luke 12, verse 15. Let's read together one more time. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Luke 12, verse 15. Our verse reminds us that we need to appreciate all that God has given to us and trust that He takes care of us in the future. God is always providing for us. We can be content when we know this and when we remember that we can trust Him no matter what. And we'll always have the best reason to be content when we remember that God sent Jesus to be our Savior. Because Jesus died on the cross, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. It's easy to look back at the way things were or look forward to what we hope it will be. But let's not miss out in what God is doing in our lives right now. That's how we can find true contentment. I as kids, don't miss out on what you have now. Celebrate and be thankful for what God is doing right now in your life. In today's story, we heard that God kept sending blessings to the Israelites, even though they kept complaining about things. One evening, lots and lots of birds called quails came and landed in the camp so the Israelites could eat the meat. Wow! And quail, yes, that's we are going to draw today. Before we start, let's make sure to have these things. Blank paper, black crayon or marker, and some coloring tools. You ready now? Later, if you feel the video is too fast for you, just pause it, follow the drawing, press play to continue the video. Don't forget, when you're done, send a photo of you and the quail to this number below. Let's get started! I think they've got the wrong impression I try to focus my attention On the fact that I'm blessed and Everything I've got is all I need You take a step back to see things differently Everything I've got is all I need Need, 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 it's all I need Hey, I must admit that Sometimes I want what my friends have Go, 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 go
when all things get boring But life isn't measured by The things you own or the things you don't I'ma be good with what I got I promise you that I am not gonna want what's his, want what's hers Yo, I'm blessed and that's for sure Fancy things are cool, I guess But you don't watch out, you just might miss That there's more to life than the eye can see Look inside, you got all you need Always try to sell me things From bicycles to shiny rings And they say Hey, check out this brand new fan It's something that you gotta have That kinda make me wanna laugh Cause contentment isn't found in possessions I think they've got the wrong impression I try to focus my attention On the fact that in our Bible story today, the Israelites were stuck in the idea that the better times of their lives were behind them. They got scared and thought that God forgotten them. They actually forgot that God had rescued them and given them their freedom. God took care of them by feeding them in the middle of nowhere with food from heaven and water from a rock. God was showing that no matter where they were, He was with them and taking care of them right now. They were so caught up in wishing for their past and worrying about their future that they missed what God was doing in the present. Have you ever been like that? There will always be things to look forward to and good times to remember, but it's important that you don't miss out on what you have now. Let us be thankful for what God is doing in our lives right now. God bless you all.